With the Advantech subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. We've uh, got another video for you today. Today, we are going to break out the floor plans and uh, we're going to talk about the room relationships and a lot of the decisions we made there in schematic design and uh, how we prepped those for the uh, construction drawings. So, without further ado, got Big Red in hand. Let's dive in. Let's take a look at those floor plans. All right, so here we have the floor plan here, and you can see uh, we got big red in hand. When I first started thinking about the floor plans, I like to think of it as a series of zones, right? So there is the public zone, there is the semi-private zone, and there is the private zone. So when we were talking about in the very first video, site planning in the Partee, remember we had a really nice view out that way, but we also had some decent views down the hill here, right? So consequently, you can see that's what drove nice big window there, nice big window system there, basically from there to there and there to there to capture that down the hill view and then here we have that full width slider view that looks out off the hill and then up here we have some windows speckled in and when we're standing at the sink here we get that view off of the uh, a little further up the hill but uh, but these are somewhat limited views because we had some mechanical equipment and stuff on this inside corner here right happening there so and then here we have that front entryway so that you know walking up the or coming out that front door you have the ability to look down the hill as well as off the deck looking down the hill so you get a lot of that looking down off the hill but anyways when we talked about it and laid it out in that part T sketch basically this is what I'm labeling as the public realm, right? And the public realm is the kitchen, the living room, the dining area, and the deck, or basically the outside dining area. We have a little ancillary space here, the pantry that feeds the kitchen. But this is basically one full space here that uh, is dedicated to living right so we cook we sit there we watch tv we socialize we go outside as well as we eat in the dining area and that is fed off of a hallway here from the front entryway which is basically right here so you come up the catwalk go in the front door and so pretty public space but rather than have that just open to that space we did a little hallway here where we are able to capture a couple storage closets coat closets but it's basically to squeeze you in and then allow you to expand again from that entry space so you take off your coat you hang it up Guests come in, and then this space opens up. We start getting all those views down off the hill, down out the backside. But we also share the largest space in the house. Um, and that's that public space that is also shared by the entry. To the left of the entry, we have the utility space. And we call it a mud flex room. And the reason for that is it actually has a bunch of things happening in there. You can see we have the washer and dryer here. 
And that's, so it's part laundry room. We have a coat rack here for your everyday coats. We have a series of cubbies here. So everybody in the house kind of gets their gear locker, if you will. And then we have a cabinet here where the homeowners actually have a computer. We have a recycling bin there for all the uh, excess mail that you don't want to receive. So this room is really doing a whole lot of things. And there's a couple dog dishes down there for the dog. Um, and then off of that public area, we have an extension of the hallway. And that bleeds into the powder room which is a public space, but pretty much everything from here, I would consider this semi-private here, and then here, we'll make that private. And so that's the owner's bedroom. But before you get to the bedroom, we have the bathroom here. And we have his and her closets. Now, the his and her closets do a couple things. One, because they're along that semi-private route to the privacy of the bedroom, they provide some insulation and sound attenuation for that room out on the end or as an appendage, which makes it, you know, very private. It's somewhat public from the outside, but as far as the inside of the house goes, it's very private and it also has a large window there. So it gets a view off of the hill there. And we have an egress door here. It's basically a walkthrough window that goes out to a metal stair with a couple steps there. But, uh, but the owner suite, which is this whole area is basically zoned as that semi-private area and private area with the private area being the bedroom proper, his and her closets. There's a hallway here that organizes all of that. And then you have the bathroom. And in the bathroom, we have the double vanity here. We have the shower here with a bench and a little niche there for shampoo bottles and all that good stuff. And then around the corner here, we have the toilet nook. And we have a nice big window here, but that has you know, it's about a 48 inch window sill. So we get privacy by virtue of the height of the window, but it's a nice wide horizontal window so that we can get a bunch of nice light in here to uh, help feed that bedroom. And then of course we have stairs down to the basement and then stairs that go up to the second floor. On the second floor, You arrive and it's an oversized landing that the homeowners wanted so they actually have a desk there with a couple filing cabinets and such and a chair and we have a nice big 10 10 foot by 18 inch window that sits up high that just fills basically this whole zone with a lot of light and then we have what I would call twin bedrooms because they're basically divided symmetrically along that line. They each get their oversized closet and doors to them. And then the second floor finishes off here with the public bathroom where you have the vanity, the toilet, the tub, and then you have a linen closet within the bathroom to store towels and uh, any other accessories we need. So it's a very simple uh, second floor plan, basically two bedrooms, little loft, oversized hallway space that uh, the homeowners use as a, an area to do Zoom calls and uh, little office space there. And, um, and then the bathroom. But uh, yeah, pretty uh, efficient floor plan. Um, and again, you know, looking at those zones and when you look at those zones, it's the larger spaces, but again, even when you get into the, say, owner suite, then that's broken down into different zones, right? Closets, bathroom, and the more private bedroom proper. But then even when you get into the bathroom, you basically have zones, right? You have the sink zone, the shower zone, 
and the toilet zone there. So as you develop the floor plan, you come up with the big picture that we know, hey, the big living space is there. We need to know, we need, we come in the house somewhere over here and then somewhere over here, we have that owner suite. So we have that kind of big picture zone of that area, this area, and then that area. And then we further break that down. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed it. That's the floor plan. Came out very, very nice. A lot of great windows. We got a bunch of pictures for you. Stay tuned for the slideshow.